Hey everybody, it's Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. How are you guys? So happy to be here with you today. I am bringing you a few more Easter treats. Sometimes you want to hand out a treat, but you don't want it to be a big, huge procession, something that you can make pretty quick. Um, for people that don't, you know, hold on to everything that you give them, but you still want to give them something and you really love to craft so you want it to be something cute and craft related so this week i am bringing you my tiny easter treats week and so it'll be seven days of quick and easy easter treats not necessarily with one stamp set um a variety and i just wanted to start with this one we're using painted poppies I have taken this stamp from the Painted Poppies and I have just used this portion here on the left. I'll bring it up to the camera so that you guys can see a little better. This portion here, that little flower and this one that's leaning is not included. So if you eliminate that, that little section, and that is what's on our front of our box. This is a triangle box and it's what I call it my floral triangle box. And inside I have some, let me let you peek, Hershey Kisses. I don't know if you can see them, but you'll see the new ones when I put them in there. I just don't want to untie the bow, so you're going to have to wait a few minutes. <laughs> Again, we're using Painted Poppies for our main um, front. And we're also using um, the Design a Daydream Host DSP, which is in the annual catalog. It will be available um through the end of april so let's go ahead and get started with this really cool project we are using coastal cabana cardstock and of course whenever we make a box we need a scoreboard right so here comes the scoreboard we are going to score this piece of cardstock, which is six inches by eight and a half inches, by the way. We are going to score it on the long side at three inches, at five and a half inches. And at the four and a quarter inch mark, we're just going to put a little tick mark there and here at this end, just because that's where we're going to do our triangles. And we just want to make sure we have the center point so we get a nice pretty triangle. We're going to rotate it to this side and we're going to score it at two inches and at four inches. This is a pretty cool box. I love triangle boxes. I've done a few of them. You can find them on my YouTube channel and on my blog. Um, just type in triangle box in the search. We are gonna need that scoreboard in a minute, but for right now, I wanna burnish and trim away the pieces we don't need, and then we'll do those triangle scores, okay? So let's go ahead and burnish on all the score lines. It's like nine rectangles. They're not all the same size, but there are your nine little rectangles. The four corners, we're gonna get rid of them. So let's bring in our thick bladed scissor. I like to use that whenever I am doing a box because the score lines bother me. I like to cut them away and a thick bladed scissor helps with that. So there is one corner gone. Let's do this one. The nice thing is that these corners are rather large, and so you can use them for other projects. So even though you're using more than a half sheet of cardstock for this box, you are left with a rather sizable amount left on the other side that you could easily make another box with. And then these nice large rectangles can be used to stamp on. They could be used for a sentiment. Um, section or a layer for a large sentiment piece or a layer on a large um, stamped image something like that so they're pretty good sized all right so here is 
the four corners cut out. And again, I'm not throwing these away because like I said, they are a nice size. So we're gonna put them to the side. We're gonna bring the scoreboard back in. Remember those little tick marks I made at the four and a quarter inch mark? Well, there's one right there. You see this uh, mark I have down the six inch line? The reason I marked that is for this kind of instance. So I want to put that little tick mark on that black score mark. And I wanna bring the corner of this piece. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it a score right to that corner, okay? I'm gonna do it the other side now. Put that little tick mark and bring the corner. And we're gonna give that a little score. So there is our little triangle. Let's do the other side. Put our little tick mark. I know you guys can't really notice, but trust me, I am lining the corner up and the tick mark up. And that's what you will do. Bring that corner. And then the same thing here, tick mark, corner. Make sure that it's lined up before I let my little stylus make its mark. I'm gonna bring it up here for you guys to see. So there is the other triangle. So these are the triangle sides. Okay. Here and here. And this is the front in the back. Now, I'm using a punch that's on the clearance rack, so grab it while you can. And trust me, it's pretty awesome. I think we've had three or four of these, maybe, maybe five um, in the history of things. <laughs> but this particular one, Fancy Tag Topper, here it is is still available on the clearance rack, so you might as well grab it while you can um, at a nice price. And I am going to insert this end here, so I'm just gonna move those out of the way, and this is the end that I'm gonna insert. I'm gonna show you from the back, it's easier for you to see without the ribbon in the way. So see that really pretty decorative topper? That's what I use this for, so we're just gonna slide it in. And Give it a punch, slide in the other side. That's why I moved these guys out of the way so they could fit in the guide here so that I could get that all the way in as far as it goes. Give it a punch, there's the other side. So now we have our two triangular ends. We have our tag sides and that is our box. So this is the, just a discard from underneath. And don't forget that this is available on the clearance rack. I'm not exactly sure the price, but it is linked in the description below of the video. So you can click on there and uh, grab you one from my um, online store because who doesn't like a deal, right? Okay, so on the front and the back, we are gonna put this small piece of designer series paper and we are using the designer daydream. It is the print that has this color on the back, but I really loved all the beautiful colors in this particular medallion type. So let's grab our silicone mat, flip these to the wrong side, grab our wet adhesive. Now these two pieces of designer series paper are one and a half by two inches. Um, you can make them any size you want, of course. I'll show you when I put it on there, I have quite a wide border. And if you don't want so much of the cardstock showing, of course, you can um, cut yours a little bigger. Just measure your area and make sure that you use the size that works for you. So I have um, a nice wide edge, as you can see here. I really love that look of it. That's why I went with that size, but you can do any size that you wish. 
And here's the other side. It gets its little piece and make sure that it is. That's why I like using this wet adhesive. You can wiggle it around, move it, make sure that it is nice. All right. Now, we're gonna put some glue on these corners. So the candy that we are gonna be using are Hershey's Kisses. And um, I got an assortment of um, Easter Kisses. And these had um, the kind of Coastal Cabana coloring to them. So I decided that I would use the Coastal Cabana for the outside of my little piece. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put adhesive on this end and I'm gonna use again the wet adhesive. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do these one at a time, okay? So this is gonna be um, the front of my box. So I'm gonna join that corner to my tag and I'm gonna put my fingers inside and I'm just gonna press down like this and on the outside, I'm gonna hold it in place. We just have to hold it for a second. You can use tear and tape if you don't wanna give it a minute to grab because there's really nothing you can clip on this to hold it. You just have to kind of put it in place and let it do its thing. So there is that side. It just takes a second. Let's go ahead and adhere the other side. I'm gonna do the front first because the back, we're not gonna glue all th both of them down because obviously you need to be able to get the candy in and out. So let's turn this one in, same thing. We're gonna line up this side of the triangle with the edge of my rectangle up here. I'm just gonna hold it in place. And I'm pushing also from the inside, giving it a nice press, making sure that it is nice and secure. And there is my front of my tag box, or my triangle box, sorry. I don't know why I keep saying tag. I, think, I guess I keep seeing the, that part. So now we can go ahead and throw our candy in here. And I am gonna, actually no, I'm not gonna throw the candy until I do my third side. So let's, let's put the candy in last. So let's go ahead and adhere our third side, our third triangle here. And I'm gonna turn that in. And just like I have done with the other side, it's just a little harder because you don't have as much space for your hands, but you still can slide your fingers inside and you want to press that end along that piece. And I like to kind of pinch it. To me, it helps to grab where it's supposed to be grabbed. Again, I'm gonna hold it. Put my finger in there and hold on to it. And like I said, that little pinching just does help, but your fingers inside and just time and patience. So there is that side. Now we'll go ahead and put our candy inside. So we're gonna leave this corner open and we're gonna shove our candy in there eight kisses fit in there nicely I can close this adhesive we don't need that and then I'm gonna take this corner and I'm gonna make sure it goes inside kind of wiggle those little pieces around and we'll just leave it like this for right now. It will close. Once we tie this top closed, this side will seal, even though it doesn't have any adhesive on it. If you want to put a Velcro dot on there, you can. It's completely up to you. I did not put one on this one. As you can see here, it is open. Now I've gaped it a little, but um, <laughs> it stays closed. Okay, so for the stamp that I was telling you about with the painted poppies, um, I use this portion up to here, not this little baby flower. And I have stamped that in um, Mento Basic Black on basic white cardstock. And then I colored with Stampin' Blends. I wanna let you know what colors of Stampin' Blends I used. I used Min Macaron Dark for the stems. And I wanted the flowers to be as close to Coastal Cabana as possible. So I took 
Bermuda Bay since we don't have a Coastal Cabana Stampin' Blend. And I use the light Bermuda Bay because Bermuda Bay and Coastal Cabana are close. Bermuda Bay is just a lot darker. So when I, by using the light marker, oh, I have chosen to color the flowers. And then I fussy cut those out. And because I like you guys and didn't want to have you sit here and watch me fussy cut when I am not very good at it, um, I still have yet to have my surgery, um, but I will very soon. Um, I wanted to go ahead and go through that part. So on the back, we are going to be using um, mini dimensionals and um the ends of some dimensionals because I like to fill in spots like these long pieces where I cannot put a regular dimensional or on some of these little flowery pieces where I cannot fit a regular, you know, a, even a mini is too big. So we are going to um, kind of fill this up and then I'm gonna use the ends, like I said, of my see how that you have this nice thick end well that's what i'm going to use so let's go ahead and start working on the end pieces i'm going to grab my paper snips because that's what i like to use and i am gonna cut these thin little strips if you will and i'm going to stick those in places where they need stuck. There's that one. Let's get a skinny one from right here. The top of that flower. I don't know if I can get one that thin for that flower, but we can try. Let's put one right there. And let's put this thicker one on this section here. And then we have a thin and a thin piece, and I want to put something right there as well. So let's put a little small rectangle. You can see I overdimensionalize things. It's just my way. You don't have to put as many as me. I just don't like um, the dimensionals to fall, if you will, or um, dip down because an area doesn't have support. So. I like to use a lot of them, but like I said, you don't have to, and it's perfectly fine if you choose not to use as many as me. It does take a little longer when you do things like this, but I think it's worth it. Let's see if I can get that thin one in there. Hopefully that doesn't stick out. If it does, I can use my take your pick tool to help me, but um, we'll see what happens. And here, this last one will be right here. I need to make sure that all the pieces and parts have a little support. Okay, the ribbon that I'm using is 12 inches of this beautiful glittered organdy ribbon. It's really pretty and I thought it was perfect for this particular piece. So we're gonna put it through this little top tag section and we're going to tie it in a little knot at the top, okay? Kind of move that over so that it's at the very top section. And then I'm gonna just tie a bow. And then my final, my final step is to add the flower piece to the top. Make sure that my bow is pretty. You guys know we have to finagle our bows, right? And if they don't behave, what do we use? Mini glue dot. <laughs> when in doubt, you make your bow behave. All right. If only we could do that for children, right? Make them behave with a mini glue dot. All right, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so here we go. All right, there we go. I'm going to roll with that, maybe just a tiny bit, that, that one part. It's a little bit of a stiff bow, so it is a little bit 
harder to tie, but it is well worth it because it, that stiffness allows you to get that nice um, ribbon and it holds really pretty. So there's that. Let's go ahead and pull the backs off of my 500,000 billion pieces of um, dimensionals. <clears throat> As I pull these off, come on. You want to definitely hold when you pull with um, the take your pick tool because you don't want to tear your piece. So you kind of have to add a little. I get all I think I have one more. There we go. All right. Let's attach our beautiful painted poppies. I love this little um this stamp set is beautiful. No matter what color you um stamp it in, it always looks really pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and add that right to the end here of the DSP. And I don't want it to be crooked, of course, so I have to make sure that I'm straight here. Let's move that. Fabulous. And there we go. I'm going to trim the ends. Grab my ribbon scissors out of my drawer here. I like to have my ribbon ends nice and pretty. This one, I think, might need a haircut. There we go. Put my ribbon scissors away and my take your pick tool. So isn't this just a fantastic quick little gift that you can make for anyone that you would like. It's perfect for Mother's Day. It's good for favors. It's a great table favor for Mother's Day. Um, it's perfect for Easter as well. So I hope that you enjoyed it and uh, that you will make a bunch of these. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Subscribe and share my video. I'm grateful for those of you who do. And uh, thank you very much for being here. This is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Happy stamping!